We're live. All right. Welcome to the Pancake Sex Books Club. Um, I feel like we need to explain the title of the book club every time we do this. <laughs> nope. Go, go watch Be Mysterious. And find out. Yeah, yeah episode two. Episode, it was episode two, right? Stolen, Kellen, Kellen yeah. or yeah. Okay. So this month for book club, we are reading, or we read, uh, 14 by Peter Kleins, which was basically like, uh, main character's name was Nate, and he moves into like a LA apartment building that's ridiculously cheap and for good reason, but you don't really know. He discovers, you figure it out. Um, but yeah, just like weird apartment things. So uh, we've got Isabel. Hi. What are you drinking, Isabel? I've got a uh, Blue Moon Harvest Pumpkin Ale. Oh, that's so harvesty. I, I, yeah, I thought it's <laughs> October. I'll drink the last of my pumpkin beers. Ah, oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we have oh, Ness. I am drinking hot apple cider with a little bourbon in it oh. for flavor. Oh, nice, nice. Hot cider. <laughs> and we have Amelia. Hello. I am drinking hot chocolate with whipped cream vodka again. Shut up, Ness. It's the best. No, it's the worst. Mm. <laughs> and I'm Melissa, and I'm just drinking Grey Goose and soda water. So Classy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess let's just get started with our impressions, what we thought and how we felt about the book, and then we'll get into our specific questions. So who would like to start? Do you guys want me to go first since I've got the negative? Sure. Oh, I, I'm also negative, so yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I know we talked about this a little bit before, but I'm working a really weird work schedule right now, so I don't know if part of that influenced my enjoyment of the book because I wasn't able to just like sit down and read it in one one or two sittings. It took me multiple sittings, and I felt like I was all like, "Yes, there's gonna be sweet monsters in the basement, and this padlocked door is gonna have like a crazy werewolf man like chained to the wall or something." Like I just thought it was gonna be crazy, right? <laughs> Thank you. Did you, you read this now? I couldn't tell you. So I was just like, sweet, this is going to be awesome. And I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's it's all these Scooby-Doo references. It's it's the Scooby-Doo episode drawn way too long out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're finally like, sweet, shit's happening. And then that took, like, that was quick, and then it was over. And I was like, oh, oh. I wanted more of that last, like, little chunk throughout. I don't know. The build-up. The build-up was, was unpleasant for me. That's interesting. That's tragic. All right. Maybe we should stagger it with a person. Amelia, what did yeah. you think? <laughs> I liked it. I wonder if it's an artifact of having listened to it on t on MP3 instead of read it because you're right when you say that it did take a long time to build and then kind of crescendo and end super fast and almost a little anticlimactically. But reading it, like I read it while I was working out and walking on the treadmill and stuff, and that kind of made it go by fast. Like I didn't, I wasn't aware of how much I was mm -hmm. really spending the time, so. It didn't bother me the same way. I thought it was a very, I thought it was a unique premise, which I really like. It, no, it definitely was unique. I didn't, like, hate yeah. it. Don't get me wrong. This is, like, the <laughs> middling, like, three for me. Like, just, like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I thought it was, I thought it was really cute. I liked, for the most part, the characters, for the most part. I had some problems, but for the most part, I liked them. I thought that the premise and the plot was very clever. Um, were there problems with it? Sure, but overall, I enjoyed it. I gave it probably a low four. I would definitely. When I went and looked at his other stuff, he didn't have anything thematically that I wanted to read, but I liked his mm -hmm. kind of easy writing style, and it was for me very smooth to get through and really fun and interesting enough to like. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I enjoyed it. Awesome, Ness. Um, I guess I have one positive thing to say about it, in that there were very few grammatical errors. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I but think that's all I've got that's positive. positive. <laughs> oh, that's tragic. Uh-oh. <laughs> that was funny. We're pretty split this time, so that's yeah, interesting. that's good. 
Yeah. I don't know if it's that I've been listening too much Night Vale and running too much to Zombies Run, but I'm used to really compact, really compelling stories delivered quickly and without a lot of fluff, and I thought there was a lot, a lot of fluff in this story. It could have been a short story, and I would have been really happy with that. Yeah, I, I had that same, like, that's what it was bugging me. I think from listening to Night Vale and doing Zombie Run and all that sort of stuff before, like, reading this, I was waiting for, like, that, like, compact story Whereas it was very, like I said, it was a long Scooby Doo yeah. episode. Right. That's funny. Or even that... like something emotionally that I would get invested in. Like mm. I don't know. I didn't really care about any of those characters getting hurt or dying. I was like, right. eh. It's eh. funny because I tried. I tried listening to the Night Vale and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's slow funny. at first. Yeah. But then Carlos that's and Cecil, and it's fine. Yes. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I have a glow, cl glow cloud. Definitely a downside of this book was the love story bits were not not okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is, it's not even one Kindle page on my iPhone was the love yeah. story. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? It, it was one of those things strong. that you, have to, you know, it could have left out, but when it was in there, I'm like, yeah, okay. But it was one of those unexpected things. Like, I'm like, so oh, okay. Awkward too. Like, <laughs> like it's so uncomfortable. It yeah. is awkward, but for me, I was like, this is like real life. Like people <laughs> just fall together, and it's just like, oh, that happened. Okay, weird. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah it was. I think it was believable. <laughs> It was just really uncomfortable. Like, I was like, "Oh, stop being, stop being like that." Like it was I thought, like she didn't want it, or she didn't want. I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. Um, I, had, I originally, when I was taking notes as we were going along, I had a question about that, like, sex scene, air quotes, because, <laughs> like, you know, and how that was like kind of weird. <laughs> but I took it out. I just was like, ah, whatever. But it was bad. That was not that was not my favorite part of the book. <laughs> um, I, think I, I did I did like the part though where he I think it was him who he said he loved her and she's just like fuck you or something like that or I forget. <laughs> Don't ruin the moment, you guys. That's what I mean. Don't ruin the moment. <laughs> they felt right. almost like added in just for the sake of having it. Mm. It didn't build up correctly. And I knew, but I knew who was gonna pair off like almost immediately when they all were together. Did you? I yeah. I actually like wasn't sure. Like I was, I thought he would end up with the, uh, what's her name? Valia. No way. Zula. The artist chick. The artist mm -hmm. girl. Mm -hmm. No, it was or, or his coworker who was literally throwing herself at him, and he didn't really notice. So. Right. Gross. I don't know. Like when they <laughs> kind of paired life. up with everybody and him and Veek interacting, I was just like, yep, this is it. Hmm. Well, for me, I obviously really liked it, and I felt bad because I was like, this is my pick, and I love my pick so far. But um, I think the reason I liked it was just the writing style in general. Like, I know Ness said you didn't like it because of fluff and stuff, but I liked the sort of, like, minimalistic focus on dialogue. Like, for me, that's, like, it's kind of snappy and it's quick. Like, I thought it was a short read to me, so I really liked that. Um and I did the same thing. I was listening to it through audiobook, and every night I took my dogs for a walk, and it just kind of like got to the point where I'm like, I should just take another block so I can kind of get to this next part. Because like I felt like the whole like 75%, 80% of the story, I didn't know where like what was gonna happen in the end, like what the whole mystery of the building was, and like there's all these like weird things that were happening and discoveries that they were made. And then when they find the tunnel, I'm like, oh my god, what's down there? Like I thought too, it was gonna be like some monster thing in the basement. Um, which was my prediction, but I was so off base. But yeah, yeah I enjoyed I was, it. I mean, I um, was close, right? I thought like monsters and shit, but it wasn't in the building. It's, it's interesting that everybody who listened to it liked it a lot. And I know. Both of us who read it did not find it. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. To me. It's, it's interesting. Like, like I didn't want to get out of the car because every he would reveal something at just enough of a pace that I would be yeah. like, "What? What is that about?" And then the next thing would come up, and I'd be like. What does that mean? You know, it was kind of like I just wanted to. I wanted to know what was going to happen, yeah. and it unfolded for me in a very suspenseful way. It didn't feel too and, dry. And for me, like I, I felt like the whole build up of the story was the most enjoyable part for me. I thought that oh, yeah. whole reveal was a little bit of a letdown. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is where it went. Like that surprised me. So. Oh, and it was too short. 
It was too short, and le and it didn't. How long is the audio book? Scary enough. <laughs> at the How end, I think the audio book was like ten or twelve hours. Okay. So, then I, was reading it, I kept feeling like this book can't be this long, and then it was. Right. <laughs> right? I was like, it must have like chapters of some other book at the end. I don't know. That's yeah, so funny like, because had, um, <laughs> Caliban's or no, Leviathan Wakes. There's another book at the end of it, and I was like mm -hmm. halfway through it, I'm like, this is ending. What the hell is at the end? And then I thought there was another book, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I thought this was good. Um, I wish I uh, got. To, I was literally at the point where I had like two hours left to listen to the story, and I was like stopped because I was like, I don't want it to be over yet. So <laughs> I was procrastinating finishing it. So I yeah, also I procrastinated did. finishing it. I did my <laughs> finish the it. show. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Well, if anyone awesome. has anything else to add, we can get into our specific <laughs> questions. Yeah, let's do our questions. I think. Okay, um, so we sort of covered it a little bit. What what was your initial prediction about the Cabbage building? So you said, I, I thought it was monsters or ghosts okay. or something. Yeah, like something really crazy, like entry to another dimension, which was kind of true, but not, not really. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought you would walk through 14 and be in another dimension. Like, that's that's what I expected. Right. Any other predictions? I didn't know. No. Okay. Uh, what did you think of the character of Nate, who is the main character? He was bland. In a way. But, like, in a realistic way, almost. So it was okay. Mm -hmm. Versus a boring way. I mean, he was still kind of boring, but, I don't know. He was weird. Like, he felt <laughs> weirdly, like, realistic, I guess, for a book character. When he was at his, whatever, temp job or whatever, and he was, like, falling behind on his work to obsess over the building, I was getting genuinely annoyed at him. Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. It's like, how could you slack off like that? So, um, other than that, I didn't, I felt like he was more of a placeholder, which was kind of funny because he's supposed to be, like, the leader of the Scooby gang or whatever, but, um. I thought everyone else was infinitely more interesting than him himself. So, yeah. Anything else? I wanted him to be more awesome than he was. I really mm -hmm. kept pulling for him to be interesting somewhere, yeah. but it never quite happened. Yeah. Okay. So, who were your favorite character, and then who was your least favorite character? So you guys said you had some issues with some of the characters. Hmm, that's a hard one. Ness, do you have one? I really liked Meek. She was one of the few people I liked. Yeah. I found her interesting. Like, at least everything we found out about her, I became more and more interested in her. Yeah. Yeah, and I liked like Tim too. Farr, but I oh. died as he was getting yeah. interesting. Yeah, I know. I was really sad about that. I know, they didn't reveal his backstory early enough. Right, and like, seriously, you guys, like, they're really believing, they believe that he's a book publisher for far too long. <laughs> Meek didn't, Meek never bought it. Not once. Yeah. But she the rest like, of them mm -hmm. are like, oh yeah, totally, you can learn lockpicking from a book that you read. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it was obvious what? who the guy in the car was and everything, and it was like, dude. Plus, that's a plot thread that left hanging, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Like, guy in the car, guy in the car, never mind. Right, we, yeah, don't, we don't see him at all, we don't see him at all, and then he's dead. Yeah. Wow. Another placeholder. Yeah. But yeah, they needed to reveal that earlier, I think that would have been more fun. Yeah. And Zia I, was just annoying. Zia yeah, but felt, I, I still think... She felt more Andrew, like a stereotype than a real person. Andrew was the same thing to me, he felt yeah. like a stereotype. Uh, well, Nesta, I was living in the South, you got your uh, classic Southern Baptist. Also, the Andrew? Mormons that, that uh, go around oh, the campuses, the Mormon. short sleeve shirts, that's what I thought yes. of immediately. Yeah. yeah, I thought of like a Southern Baptist slash like Mormon mix yeah. going on. Do you love his Lego hair, hair though? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great descriptor, I thought. That was really brilliant. Yeah, that was good. Um, uh, I can't even think of his name. The kind of the deadbeat guy who like worked Roger. on the film set. Roger. Roger. I liked him. I don't know why. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I kind of liked him too. 
I also yeah. really like Debbie and Clive. Like, I thought they were really cute. They creeped me the hell out. They were the scariest part of the movie. I couldn't figure out how old they were, though. <laughs> They were like they liked each other. I thought they would die immediately. That my right? prediction was that those two would die immediately because they were like super nice. Yeah. <laughs> and you're dead. I thought that one girl who like in the end would just went into meltdown mode. Like I thought she was like rather useless, and I like she had kind of a big part. Not a big part, but like there was time spent on her character in the beginning about her like doing her taxes or something. I can't remember exactly. Her credit what it score. Was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Credit score. Yeah, and then so it was just every time she checked it. I wanted to shake her, like, girl, you can't check. Mandy, you can't check your credit score every day. You're going to make it keep going down. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. She just disappeared into the fringe work. Because I, when they mentioned her at the end, I was like, who? And then yeah. you said the credit score thing. I was like, oh, my God, wait a minute. That's who Mandy yeah. was the whole book. Cause I just, and then she was just there. Years. And then she was in denial after, which was funny. I fell on my head. I fell, I hit my head, it didn't happen. <laughs> it was um, a good mix of different personalities, I will say that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It, it did kind of embody the weirdness of people that you meet in your apartment building. Although, I don't know about you guys, but anytime I've ever lived in an apartment building, I never became friends with my neighbors at all, or really knew much about them. So, I find that interesting, because it almost makes me like want to. Not that I'll ever live in an apartment ever again, but... <laughs> Like, Not hmm. one designed by Nikolai Tesla. Just don't, mm. don't yeah. go there. But I think point. my favorite character was Tim, I think. And when he died, I was really sad. And, ups- <laughs> like, I was really mad because at the end, when the building super guy, like, the manager Oscar. guy, like, Oscar gets, you know, taken away, and Nate's like, well, we should go find him. And Tim is the voice of reason. He's like, no, that dude's dead. Like, we should not go find that guy. And they're like, no, no, we should go check. And so they go check, and of course he's dead. And then on their way back, Tim dies. And it's like, that was just one more unnecessary death, and it was all Nate's fault, and Tim is the voice of reason. So I was mad at Nate for that. That whole field trip was useless, which was sad, Mm -hmm. because he had an interesting world there that we could have had more from. And he yeah. just kind of was like, no, we're going to run away and get back in the building. <laughs> you know? And I was yeah. like, no, no, explore the city now. Like, right. Which kind of leads into my next question. It was Actually, it was uh, Amelia's question about the cockroaches. <laughs> what even and where from? <laughs> so in the building, That's like, I felt like... <laughs> yeah, there was like this, you know, cockroach thing going on in the building, and then the only like that I felt like was a loose end as well. So there's these cockroaches with the extra leg, and then there's those creatures in the other world that had like the extra leg, and he like it reminded him of the cockroaches, but that's as far as it went. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they couldn't think, live outside the building. I think the overseers are the cockroaches in the other reality. I kind of thought that too, but I wish there was more. That's I wish cool. There was more. I do wish they had said that. Every time they mentioned the cock, I was like, why? Right, enough with the cockroaches already. Or explain them or make them valuable to the plot, one or the yeah. other. You know, don't yeah. just throw something in there. Most of the stuff he'll, he threw out, he made a purpose for. Mm-hmm. But this one just kind of went unpurposed. That was right. nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, they were weird. They were just weird. I, don't know. I was just like, no, cockroaches, no. Yeah. Um, what was your most surprising or shocking moment in the book? Opening the door to 14 to have it be space. That was weird. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. That, and then I feel like when they messed with the dial and they saw, like, the Cthulhu thing, I was like, sweet, it's Cthulhu. And then I, then all of that was kind of just like, oh, okay, it's just another reality, kind of. That was one aspect that really frustrated me was when they did that the first time and Nate was the only one who saw that and then he kept that little tidbit of information to himself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Selfish bastard. Realistically not the best decision maker, that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How he wound up in charge, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't get that either. And they kept being like, "Well, who's in ch-? like?" He, he's like, "Why am he's I in charge?" charge? He was the most not leader person in the group. Mm-hmm. Yep, it should have been Veek, to be honest. Like, yes, it should have. And when he said that at the end, I was like, "You should still do that. You are wrong." <laughs> I was mad. Mm-hmm. He didn't get it. Didn't get the promotion. Mm-hmm. 
Um, honestly, the biggest surprise I had was that they got all the way down underneath the ground to where the, the engines were, and there was nothing really scary there. <laughs> yeah, there was like, nothing really scary in any of really them. really needed a like, jump scare right then. Just suspense with... The end, I guess, was a little scary, but like I was expecting more horror, I think. Maybe that's mm -hmm. part of my disappointment. I expected way more horror, especially because of the cover and stuff. What does the cover even know. look like? It's like a door with a padlock on it and the number oh, 14. Right. So I just was okay. like, oh yeah, it has to be like some crazy, like, I don't know. Just the cover, like, for me immediately was like, oh, this is going to be some sweet horror book. and mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Or Any other? They could have caved in and they could have been trapped down there. Really anything. Yeah. One Definitely. of them could have fallen into the magma. That would have been fun. Right! This is nice. Right. Instead of into space, she should have went into the magma. I did have, like, I thought this was scary. one of the scariest moments for me was when they discover that, like, sub, like, go, they go in the basement, and then they discover that sub thing where it's him and Beak and Tim, and they're going down the stairs. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, what are they going to find there? And then... Mm -hmm. You know, it's like one more step, one more step, and I was like, oh my god, something horrible is going to happen. And then it didn't, so I was like slightly relieved, but like, I was like, yeah, scared yeah, so okay. for me. It was good, yeah, it was good. See, it was, and that's, I couldn't stop reading because stuff like that kept happening. So I always think yeah. that's a good book when I just want to keep going so I know what's happening. Yeah. So in chapter 54, I made this big note about it, um, they discover something about this doomsday cult. I immediately thought of Andrew. Did like that? Did you guys like make that connection? I was like, oh my god, religious cult, Andrew. No, I didn't. I was surprised mm -hmm. I didn't actually when it happened. I was like, I should have realized this. Okay. Well, well I'm glad that's not obvious. It was just like to me, I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be Andrew because I felt like they kept they spent a lot of time on that thing, and then when Andrew is ta inviting Nate to his church, like, I'll sponsor you, it was, like, really weird to me, but... It's just so Mormon, or whatever. It didn't, or Jehovah's yeah. Witness, yeah. Yeah, it never really, it didn't occur to me one way or the other, but when he was yeah. evil, that was great. Yeah. Was no, I, for me, that wasn't a surprise at all. Like, as soon as they mentioned Doomsday Cult, I was like, man, Andrew is totally one of those, and he's, like, the spy of all of this stuff. And then when that whole thing happened at the end where he goes and gets family and they kill those people, I was like, yeah, I expected that. So, um, that Did anybody else think it was weird that they didn't really go into why the people were so misshapen in the cult? I almost wondered if those people were not actually people. Like, they were the weird... Overseers that came over. Overseers, yeah. But if that's true, then why can they live outside the building? Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Like, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they did say that the like the Auntie Bradbury had the same kind of like weird skin as the overseers, mm -hmm. but it still yeah. doesn't explain why they could leave the building unless they were mm -hmm. within that that safe zone yeah. around the building. Maybe they were, but the yeah, that then. was weird. Yeah. Yeah, I thought she was gonna totally come back to life and like kill them or something. So did I. I, I was waiting for that jump scare. I was just like, oh god, this is kind of happen. Nope, nope. He and kept returning to it. Like the dude Clive dragged him down the stairs and dragged him outside. And it was this long, drawn out thing, and I was like, they must be coming back to life, and then they never did. Yeah, I was bummed. Another suspense moment. <laughs> um. One of the things that really bothered me about Nate and, uh, like, a part of the story is when he finds the dead body in the wall, like, whatever the name of the guy was, one of the founding people, and how freaked out he was about that after everything they'd already discovered, like, the bloody stuff on the wall and all these things, and then the thing that did it for him was the dead body in the wall, like... No, the blood like, on the wall was way creepier than... Bob. Yeah! Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, and that was, like, the catalyst that had him, like, basically go stay with Veek, right? With, like, this dead body thing or something yeah. like that. Um, Why hadn't yeah. he opened that way before then, too? Because he yeah. knew it was there in, like, the first part of the book. Why didn't mm -hmm. he go right to it when he started investigating? Yeah. No, I thought Bloody Wall was definitely more scary than Body in the Wall, but that was just me. <laughs> no, I, oh, yeah. yeah, I felt the same way, and I was really confused that it took him so long to open that hatch. Because he noticed it, like, right when he moved in. Mm -hmm. 
So I, also, it was just weird. I couldn't believe, like, that when they started peeling all that stuff off their wall in the apartment, like, I would never do that. Like, I don't even care. Like, for the whole damage deposit thing, <laughs> I'm like, these people are crazy. This would never happen. No one would do this. So. I don't, know. I don't know. Once I found weird math on my wall, I might be curious to know where it went. It really <laughs> Yeah, I probably would too. Yeah. In that building, probably. Yeah. I would not live in that building. I think I'd be one of the people who was like, this building is weird. I'm out. Like, I can't live here. I wouldn't be chill with it. Also, I want to know why it took them so long to stop renting out room 16 and what was up with that with all the people killing themselves within <laughs> a year. Like, what? Was they, like, all these people died, but we're not going to talk about why that happened. Mm-hmm. They never explained it, did they? No. Did yeah. They? Like, um, kind of they did. We, I don't remember. I'm just going to take one of these questions out because we already talked about the big reveal and kind of how we felt about it. Unless you guys have any other thoughts on that. No. I don't. Nobody. It wasn't fleshed out enough. That's my point. Yeah. That yeah. was the part where I was like, like, what? I'm done already? No, more book. I, I do have to more say... Less of Nate's dead end job. That's what I. Yeah. Mean. yeah. yeah. Less Eddie. Oh my god. More. Dead yeah. end job and Eddie was the worst. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I can do that in my real life, man. I want to know more right. about creepy Cthulhu thing. Yeah. The yeah. thing. That- one thing that I did really enjoy, especially about the audiobook that I'm sad that you guys missed out on, was the squid whales. Like, the voice oh, yeah. of the yeah. alpha squid yeah. whale. Oh, my God. That was actually, like, highly entertaining and, like, scary. Like, he did a really good job. So. It was pretty great. Maybe yeah. that's part of it. It's, like, reading the, the squails in your head is not very, like, terrifying. <laughs> I just made them robots. <laughs> 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 like I would like <laughs> Daryl Jones did. Like he was like feed hungry. Like it was great. It was I just made them harbinger TV. in my head, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then the last question was, did you think that fourteen is an appropriate title for this book? No. 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 Worst no. title ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we literally dealt with that room one time. And it's mm-hmm. when we lost Mrs. Knight into the vortex of space. Which, I know it's yeah. A vortex, but they could also like a leave it somehow? I'm not really sure what's happening. It's weird. Like, I felt like the, because, like, it was called 14, I was expecting, like, crazy things with room 14. And then, I mean, obviously I was surprised when they opened it and it's a vortex of another dimension. But, like, they kind of, after that, like, they left it at that. And then it was, like, the same room and being able to lift in this other dimension sort of thing. Like... Like, is that a design flaw of the building, or, like, I don't know. I felt no, like they that was explained really... it. It was a counterweight. All okay. of space had to be a counterweight for the machine to work properly. Right. That was big put it in there, I don't you know. I'll have named it, like, Nikola Tesla's building, and it'd probably sell a lot more copies, because people are so obsessed with Tesla. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> but then, we then ever... spoiler alert, right? Well, wait, did we ever find out what the NT stood for? Tesla. Nicholas. Yeah, it was Tesla. Okay, that's right. Never mind. Never mind. I was like, wait yeah. a minute, didn't they miss a letter? And then I thought the same thing with like the Whipple's grandson being HP Lovecraft. I was like, really? <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Like I thought that was kind of a funny nod to that. So Yeah, I, I mean like, it was a good nod to it. I was just kinda of like, huh, okay. But he did a lot of little nods to things, though. There were yeah. a couple of, of lost jokes and a couple of Doctor Who jokes in there that there were. I was surprised by that. Like, uh, the that, foot joke caught me off. I was like, whoa, whoa. That, that was one of the things that I really liked about it, was that because it's been written so recently, and then they acknowledge, like, he acknowledged, like, those other little things, like, cultural, like, sci-fi stuff. I mean, there's a heavy emphasis on, like, Scooby-Doo, obviously, but the little nods to the other things were funny to me, so... But yeah, as a, as a title, I didn't think 14 was appropriate. Like, yeah, okay, the explanation that you just re- like jogged my memory about, like, yes, that makes sense, but it still, still seems like such a minor focal point that I was just no, like, why yeah. did you call it 14? Like, you could have called it, like, the Cabbage Building or something like that. I don't know. Right. I feel like 14 yeah. was a red herring. I expected that to have way more of a role in the book than it actually yeah. did. See, it was I feel totally like you know, a red herring. The Cabbage Building, you just think it was, like, stories from... 
whatever that school was, those kids' books I read. <laughs> With, like, the weird math problems in it. I don't know if anyone else here read those. Mm -mm. I cannot think of a series. Did not read that. Mm -mm. I don't know. Or, but it makes I me think of that. Like, I don't know. Anything building. I wouldn't be interested in it then. At Tesla least in 14, I'm like, ooh, this might be interesting. Yeah. I'm interested in Tesla's building. All right. Any other closing thoughts before we do our star rating? No. No. <laughs> no it was, yeah. All right. Who wants to start? Oh, the book was Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Oh. That's what I would think of if I saw a book called The Cabbage Building or any <laughs> building that isn't like architecture or photo book type thing. Right. <laughs> and then I, I guess it would kind of fit though because they did have weird math equations. Mm. They did. Oh, I forgot. I was gonna mention like, I felt like the 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 whole thing with Nate not caring about his job and having like no purpose, and then the building being like his purpose. I kind of predicted that he would end up with some sort of job being like a building manager or something at the end. Like mm -hmm. if his Oscar died, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. is going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's my closing. I had, like, a few <laughs> correct predictions. I had, like, two predictions that actually were right. Everything else I was completely off base. So, yeah. But anyway, I I personally am giving it, because on Goodreads you can't do halves, I gave, I'm going to give it a four and a half because I love the audiobook a lot, and I really enjoyed it. So that's my rating. I would give it a one and a half. But I'll probably give it a two on Goodreads since you can't do halves. Yeah, I I would say two and a half, but I gave it a three on Goodreads since no half stars. So I just round up, and then I left a review about it being a drawn out Scooby Doo episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I gave it a four. I liked it. It was readable, and I do wonder if it has something to do with the audio versus the text, and okay. maybe like being busy. Like while I was reading, I was doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe that helps. So if you're gonna, if you want to read it, do it like that. Do the audio book. <laughs> do the audio. P.S. Is the your 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 mug is amazing. I have a piggy one. Yes. Is. Cute. Is, is that a Chapters or Indigo mug? I don't know. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. I think I got it at Marshalls. Yeah. Nice. Or TJ Maxx for like three dollars, and they had a pig one, so I got that. And then I was like, okay, I can't buy any more animal mugs. Um, obviously, you can buy more animal mugs. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> all the animal mugs. I would. Right. So, mixed reviews. The people who listen to the audiobook had higher ratings than the people who read it and had very low ratings. So. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it is kind of interesting. I, I really yeah. want... Um, we need to get some people we know to listen to it and read it and see what they say. Yeah. We need more nice. evidence. So next month's pick is from Ness. So would you like to tell us what it is and what it's about? No, oh, I can't. Spoiler alert, God. No, we are going to read, um, as Mel may have guessed already, Patrick Weeks' first book, The Palace Job, or first okay. book in the series at any rate. Um, it's a delightful romp. If you don't like it, you're Delightful wrong. romp. Yeah. Uh oh, well, <laughs> Mary is already wrong. <laughs> and so this one is just is a standalone, like his own original fiction, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second yeah. one just came out, so it's a good time to read the first one. I might All be right. Wrong. We'll see. I did warning. I did throw it across the room at one point, so there's that. I didn't get far enough into it to know one way or the other, so yeah. I haven't started it at all. I haven't yeah. either. I almost bought it and did, and then I was like, I better wait. See, I'm torn because I don't know if I should listen to the audiobook or read it, and I'm more, I feel like I'm inclined to read it because I listened to a sample, and it's like a British lady reading it, Ooh. and she sounded a little dry, um, but I don't know, like, I pretty the, much listen to all my books. The only reason I would, I, I read it book form, not audiobook form. But I'd be interested to see how some of the names were pronounced. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like, that was like the nice part about like the audiobook for uh, Kushil's Dart. It's like, at least I knew how everything was pronounced. Yes. But, I, yeah, I'm probably just going to read it. Yeah. It's a quick read. Yeah, it's a 10-hour audiobook, so. Good. Good, good, good. Looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. excited. 
So if anyone wants to read it along and then watch us talk about it in a month's <laughs> time, then you can. So that's what we're reading. So until next month. Yeah, come join us. I forget, I forget oh, that we... Oh, it's also in the this. Kindle's uh, owner's lending library. What does that mean? You can, like, rent it? So if you have Prime, you can rent it. Mm, okay. Cool. Yep. Right so on. I picked it up. We'll see. So yeah, everybody should join us, read this book, you know. And then harass Patrick about it on Twitter. I think yeah, he, yeah. it's funny, I think I saw him saying how that it's, like, it's going to be awkward. awkward. I definitely <laughs> plan to make it as awkward as possible, so please join me in that. I'm glad I'm not hosting that. I'm glad Ness is hosting that. <laughs> I mean, it's not like there's sex in it like in Suzanne's book, so it can't be more awkward than that. Is there sex in it? Because that's, like, something I'm curious about. Well, you'll have to read it and find out. God. Oh. Spoiler. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Right. Just because I would guess one. there's probably not. Just because I read one of David Gator's Dragon Age books once, and I got really frustrated because it was like a fade to black moment, and I'm like, damn it. I mean, come on. You should have expected that all the I know. I should have. origins were fade to black. I know. Which book of his did you read to completely get off topic? <laughs> the one with Loghain, the very first one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Say bye, and then we can keep chatting. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>